Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a quick look at a battery from Time USB. This is one of the least expensive 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that I have seen. So, is it worth a look? Let's find out. All right, per usual, we got to get this thing out of the box and see what you get. All right, got a nice manual and quick start packet. Let's see what this stuff looks like. All right, there's the user guide. Looks pretty similar to the other product manuals I've seen for these kinds of batteries. Multicolor graphics, lots of good information. I'll check that out in greater detail later. It looks like it's got an operation guide or what I would call like a quick, quick start guide as well, which is, uh, Got some pretty decent information on it as well, kind of uh, keeping you from doing anything stupid right out of the box. Always a good idea. All right, this looks like the terminal studs. It feels like uh, two sets of terminal studs. There it is, it's certainly very colorful. All right, nylon strap on top that's removable. Kind of a uh, pretty typical for this form factor. A couple of uh, stoppers there, epoxied in terminals, clearly marked positive and negative, and they are color coded as well, which is nice. All right, not a lot to do as far as the introductory walkthrough because hey, it's a 12 volt battery. So let's get to the testing and find out how well it performs. All right, I have run this battery through a small gauntlet of tests, but before we get into those uh, results and observations, let's talk about some of the other more critical information here that you might want to be aware of. So as I think I mentioned, well, I don't think I mentioned the actual price earlier, but this thing actually is selling on Amazon for I think right about 279. And you can also get this on their website direct from Time USB. It's timeusbpower.com. And I'll put links to this stuff in the, in the description below if you want to go check them out. And I think they did give me a discount code but I believe the discount code only works on their website, uh, not through Amazon. So I'm not 100% sure about that, but you, you may want to check and see which one of those gives you the best price. In any case, 279 is one of the best prices I've seen on a lithium iron phosphate battery in this capacity class. Now I did check the buyer rating on Amazon and it is 4.7 out of five uh, for this particular battery. So that's excellent as well. Now from a warranty standpoint, this has a five year warranty on it, which is excellent. And being lithium iron phosphate, as you might expect, it has a very long life uh, rating, which in this case is rated to maintain at least 80% of its original capacity after at least 4,000 cycles, which gives it a functional lifespan of somewhere between 10 and 20 years, depending on how you use it. Now, Time USB does make these batteries in a variety of configurations, voltages, and capacities. So, but in this particular case, the 12 volt 100 amp hour version is uh, weighing in at 23 pounds, which is a significant weight advantage over your typical sealed lead acid battery of the similar capacity. And from a dimension standpoint, it is 13 inches long in this in this particular orientation, it is about eight and a half inches high and 6.8 inches deep in this direction. Now Time USB does market this battery as having grade A prismatic cells. Now I'm not gonna do a teardown of this battery, I'll leave that to other channels to do. But being grade A batteries, if in fact they really are, we would expect them to output very close to or maybe slightly better than their rated capacity of 1280 watt hours. So we'll see in the test how that actually worked out. Now this battery does have a 100 amp BMS with all the usual protections, including overcurrent, overload, high temp cutoff, but it does not have a low temp cutoff. They do make a version that is called the smart version. This is the pro version. And you wouldn't really expect something in this <laughs> sub $300 range to have low temperature cutoff protection because there's a lot of extra things involved with that that cost money to produce. So if you are going to look at something like this, you need to be able to keep this thing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius or warmer in order to charge it. Now you can discharge this thing down to negative four Fahrenheit. And I think, what is that? Negative maybe 20 or so Celsius. It uses your standard M8 bolts here, which if you're uh, looking for ring terminals for your cables, I think that equates to about a uh, 5 16th ring terminal. All right, let's jump into the testing and see how that went. Should take a while. We're gonna let this thing run for quite a few hours. I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of seven hours or so, and uh, we'll check back, find out how many electrons we caught. 
DC discharge is done. Let's see what kind of capacity we were able to get. All right, as you can see, we got actually better than rated capacity. We got 1,299 watt hours and then 106.6 .6 amp hours. All right, now that we've confirmed the usable capacity is quite good on this time USB life before battery, let's see how the BMS performs. This is a 100 amp BMS and I'll put a quick shot of the battery parameters from the manual up here so you can see. But it says that the uh, maximum continuous charge or discharge current is 100 amps and the maximum continuous load power is 1280 watts. And you can see there for five seconds, you can get up to 280 amps. I'm not sure I've got anything to pull 280 amps out of this thing, but I can certainly run it past 100 amps and 1280 watts. And we'll find out if the BMS cuts us off immediately or if it gives us a little bit of headroom to work with. So let's go ahead and connect this AC inverter. I'm also gonna connect my battery tester there so I have some additional uh, flexibility in dialing up a particular load on the battery. And we'll find out what we end up with. Now I will point out that when you go to connect your AC inverter and you complete the circuit, if you don't have a breaker between the um, the positive lead and the terminal on the battery, you will get a spark as the capacitors charge on there. So just be aware of that. You want to make sure you're wearing glasses and you don't have your hands anywhere near the first contact as the capacitors energize because a spark will pop off of that if the capacitors are fully depleted. So be aware. Now this small lead right here actually goes to my Victron Smart Shunt. So I'm just uh, connecting that so that we can monitor the actual load on the BMS. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a load on the battery here and we're gonna start dialing up the demand both from a space heater, which I have on the floor and plugged into the AC inverter, also the heat gun and my battery tester. And we're gonna monitor the load that the BMS is, uh, is also monitoring, hopefully, uh, through this Victron Smart Shunt right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my Victron Connect app and connect to the Smart Shunt so we can see what it currently sees. All right, so we can see here we currently have no load on the battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by turning on the AC inverter. Now you can see we got a small watt draw. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the uh, space heater. And this should get us up into the neighborhood of 1100 watts, maybe a little more than that. And it's gonna take us upwards of 30 seconds or so to get up to that 1100 watts. All right, so the space heater is gonna to continue to climb up to another, I don't know, 30 watts or so. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the heat gun on low. All right, now I'm gonna dial up the battery tester and get us to where we're up to the 100 amp mark and uh, the 1280 watt mark. All right, so we are just over 100 amps, about 101. And we're at 1,284 watts. The battery is not complaining yet. We're gonna let it run that way for a little while and just make sure that it runs for several minutes. All right, it seems pretty clear that the battery is not gonna have a problem with us running here pretty much at its maximum rate. So let's go ahead and dial this up a little bit more. As you can see, we're now over 1,300 watts and 107 amps. The BMS is still not shutting us down. We're at 110 amps, 1387 watts. Let's let it run here for another minute or two. All right, so nearly 10% over the stated maximum amp draw here at 110 amps. And after several minutes, we're still running just fine. Now remember, we should be able to get, according to the manual, somewhere in the neighborhood of 280 amps, but just for a few seconds. Now I can't get 280 amps out of this, but I can pretty significantly exceed what we're doing now by cranking the heat gun to its highest setting. It's been more than five seconds and we are still cruising. 200 amps, 2400 watts.
So my 2001 inverter tripped before the BMS on the battery. So still showing 180 watts being pulled, and that's being pulled through my battery tester here, which is the max about, that's about the max I can get out of the battery tester. But as you can see, clearly the BMS did not shut us down. It, it was actually the inverter. All right, so as you saw, we actually got 1,299 watt hours out of this thing, which is about 102% of rated capacity. So I'm inclined to agree that these are in fact grade A cells. And I did run that capacity test three times, and each time I got results that were very consistent within about one watt hour of the other test. Now, as I previously mentioned in the stress test clip when we were testing the BMS, it is rated for a maximum continuous charge discharge rate of 100 amps and a load of 1,280 watts, which is no coincidence, 12.8 times 100 amps equals 1,280. And then the specs also say that you can pull up to 280 amps out of this thing for just about five seconds. And as you saw in the test, we ran this thing well into the 200 range. We didn't get it up to 280, but I ran it for several minutes at 200 amps and nearly 2,400 watts until my inverter actually cut me off. Uh, the BMS didn't actually kick in there. So I didn't really get to find out where the hard cutoff was on this because my inverter, unfortunately, is a 2,000 watt inverter and it, it didn't let me run long enough to be able to see what I could actually get from this BMS. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention is this product manual is actually one of the, one of the better product manuals I have ever seen. Not only does it give you all of the sort of expected essential information about the battery parameters, um, the settings you might wanna use when you're setting up your solar charge controller and your inverter, assuming your inverter gives you the ability to configure those parameters, you know, things that are all appropriate for this lithium iron phosphate chemistry, but it also provides you a bunch of different illustrations for just about every possible multi-battery configuration that you might want to do. So this thing supports up to 16 batteries in a battery bank using a 4P4S configuration. So four uh, parallel, four series. And this gives that would give you up to uh, over 20 kilowatt hours of capacity, which is really fantastic. And this battery shows you all about how to make that happen, how to configure that. And not only does it show you with illustrations, it also gives you a bunch of little best practices and how to make sure that you are balancing the batteries, how you're rebalancing the batteries in the future, um, how to connect them up to bus bars, all the things you obviously are gonna to wanna to do to make sure that you are optimizing the performance out of these batteries, which are obviously a sizable investment. So I definitely give the folks at Time USB credit for producing a very good quality manual with lots of very good information. So to wrap things up, I am very impressed with how this pro version of the battery performed, especially when you consider that it costs less than $300, which is a fantastic deal for a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And if you need something bigger than that, they've got other versions of this, uh, both on their website and also on their Amazon store. And I'll put links below if you wanna go check those out. Anyway, if you found any of this information helpful, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. I would really appreciate that. I've got some more things coming, including some things that I think might save you some money in the future and some DIY stuff. So that all of that's in the queue and coming soon. So subscribe if you're into that kind of content. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for you on this one. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.